YOLO, Composing Gloves here, and today we are going to be taking a look at pulley problems. Let me grab my, let me grab my hat. So, okay, pulley problems. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So these are general case pulley problems. General case just means we don't have actual numbers, and in many ways, it's actually really nice because we don't need to worry about uh, units in our calculations. If we were given numbers, what I what, what's easier to do is you just turn it into a general case. Uh, so it's all variables. That way you don't need to worry about your units getting messed up. And then in your calculations column, you just plug in the numbers at the end. And so it's a very effective way of solving these problems. Uh, we start with case one. It's the easiest case. And we go to case four, which is we have like, look at this. We've got a ramp with things and a pulley on it. It's like we're getting crazy now. So uh, a couple notes uh, at the beginning. We note here all pulleys are assumed to be ideal. Pulleys, meaning there's no mass or friction, or they're made so well that it's negligible. So that's a nice, we don't need to worry about that. Caused by our pulleys, that is. And then pulleys are assumed to be fixed. So thank goodness we don't have moving pulleys. That could be that could be actually quite interesting. Think of the things you can make with that. But let's go ahead and just dive into this first one. It's actually, case one's called the Atwood machine. It's named after a guy. So you can go check out all the cool things about the Atwood machine. It was used to uh, verify a bunch of stuff. But we just want to solve our simple problem. So we have a given column. This is the stuff we are given. All our answers must contain only things that we're given. If it's not in our given column, then we can't say that. So because we wouldn't have numbers for that, so it would be unknown. So we have to have stuff that we know. So it's got to be in our given column, stuff that we know. So we're given, in this case, that our mass 1 is greater than our mass 2 and gravity because we're on earth and then we have our to be determined that is our acceleration we want to know what is the acceleration of this system because we are we have something a system that is out of balance so therefore there will be an acceleration and then we also have our fbd which is our free body diagram and for this case we're going to have a pulley and then we're going to have of course our objects that are going to show their center of mass with this here big black dot and all our forces acting upon these objects must come from these big black dots. So if you do not have one that's very visible, uh, you're going to get all messed up. So you want one. You actually don't have to do it on the object, but I always do it on the object just for clarity. And I have all these colors I can work with. But if you're working with like just pencil, you might consider doing a little, might consider doing the dot like, you know, over here. And then you'd put like, oh, this is like mass one. And then you show like your forces going on and you know, whatnot. So, okay, let's uh, let's take a look at something sort of interesting. So we've got our, our two masses here, and they're on this pulley. Now, our pulley is suspended from a surface of some kind. It's not attached, or neither, neither of these is attached to a surface. It's attached to a string, right? That means we're going to have tension, but we're not going to have a normal force because they're not attached to a surface. So we're hanging, we've got this pulley, and we know this mass is greater than this mass. So that means that if we were to draw a gravity, so we know that gravity is going to be acting on both these objects. So here's the first object's gravity. Well, this gravity has to be less than that gravity, right? Because our object, this one's greater, so our object's going to move around like that. And we see that here by these arrows that we have here. We have our arrows showing our direction. You have to have these because they define your positive direction. Now, you notice here that Positive uh, for this mass is up. So mass 2, positive, is up. While, whoops, we're on uh, music here. We're going to go back to physics. While on this mass, positive is down. So this just simply means that this is something that's a little confusing at first, but your positive and negative are different for each mass. It depends on how you define it. So in this case, positive is up on this side, positive is down on the other side. So You'll see, you'll see when that becomes important a little bit later. So these are these green lines are our uh, gravity, right? And so we're going to have m1g, the weight of our object. And then we're going to have the weight of our second object, m2g. And both of these objects are attached to the same string. The string goes all the way up and over, right? So this same string is going to have the same tension. And remember, Tension is always a pull on the object. So we're going to have tension going up, and it must be the same size. If it's a different size, then it's no good. And since it's the same tension, they're both called T. 
because T for tension, right? So we have a pull. Now, there's another rule here. So, so far, we look okay, but um, this tension that we drew here, it must be the same, but it must also be greater than our gravity. And the reason is our object is going up. And so if our, if our gravity is greater than the pull, um, our object will not go this way. It's, it's sort of a... Um, it's, it's called a, a magnitude check. You have to do it. Your diagrams have to look accurate. So this, this gravity vector here, this green line, has to be smaller than our tension. And right now it's bigger. So we have to change that. So we're going to change that to make it just, a, just small. There you go. And this is actually all the forces we have to deal with. So it's a really easy problem in this respect. So we say, okay, let's go over to our equations. And in our equations, we're going to have mass 1 equations. And we're going to have mass 2 equations right and since we're dealing with two objects they're each going to have a net force and the reason is they each have their own center they each are going to be moving according to their own center of mass so we're going to have an f net force for the first one and we ask is the system balanced if it is it's going to be zero if it's not it's going to be that mass times acceleration so it's not and by the second law of motion we're going to have mass one times acceleration and then we're going to have f net the forces combined on this object because that's going to tell us how the object moves this is sort of a lecture thing I, I i'd rather solve the problems in this video but just don't forget this is this is like going to tell us how the object is uh moving so for the second object our object is moving right they're both moving because they're going up and down so this object would go up this one would go down so that means that this one's going to be equal to M2A. And we want to know A. So now we've got A, uh, but we can't quite solve for it yet. Because these are two different F nets. They're not the same. This is F net for M1. So we got to convert F net. And that's the sum of forces acting upon the object in that dimension. And so there's only one dimension, so it's really easy here. So it would be tension. And our tension's positive for M... Uh, oh, whoops. Nope, it's not, it's not positive. It's negative. That's why you check. I was looking at M2. So if we look here, our tension is going up, but we've defined positive as going down. So our tension must be negative. So we have a negative tension, and our gravity is positive, M1G. Or our, or our weight is positive. That's going to be equal to M1A, because this is these are all the forces acting upon that object. So we've got them all accounted for. Then we go to our second object. Well, the F net on this one, T is now positive. This T is positive because we've defined positive right there. Positive is up. So don't, don't mess that up. That's an important thing. Otherwise, your equations will be all wrong. So we say this is T minus M2G, and that's going to give us the mass 2 uh, times the acceleration. So, okay, cool. We've got two systems of equations now. We're pretty much done with the physics. All we need now to do is to solve for A. So I'm going to do the, um, I'm going to solve the system by doing addition, the addition method. So I'm going to have M1G minus T equals M1A. That comes from right here. And then over here, we're going to have underneath it, we're going to have M2G, and it's negative, plus T. I simply move the variables around. I'm assuming your algebra is okay. And that's equal to M2A. Now, when we add these together, dun, 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 we're going to get, I'm going to write it down here, we're going to get M1 minus M2. And I'm, I'm factoring the G out right here. So these both have G, so I'm just going to factor that out. And that's equal to A, factoring the A out, same way I factored the G out. And it's going to be M1 plus M2, because this is the addition method. So... This is negative because we added a negative M2, so it's just negative. There's no point in writing plus minus. It's ridiculous, man. And then here, it's a really easy problem. After this, we just divide by M1 plus M2, and we get G times M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2 equal to A. And that is our first answer. So we say, all right, we got it. And so hopefully this made sense. We're going to move up a little bit now. So now we've gotten a little more crazy. We have an object. So case two. 
an object of mass m1 is connected via an ideal pulley to another object of mass m2. The first object accelerates on a flat rough surface with coefficient of friction mu sub k, while the second object accelerates on the side of it on the side of the table, not touching it parallel to the table's legs. What is the system's acceleration? So this is this is a whole lot of information, but basically we're given we have a mass one, so that's given to us. We have a mass two over here. We have gravity because we're on Earth, and we are given a friction of coefficient. So now what we need to do, and we want to know our acceleration. So our first two columns taken care of. Let's now draw our diagram. So we're told that we have like we have a table here, right? And we have a pulley on it. So here's my pulley. Boop, boop, boop. And we have a string coming down off this pulley. And a string. And this is the same string. I'm drawing it separately, but it's the same. They are attached. And we have an object here. And they give us an important uh, clue here. They say this object on the side is not touching, not touching the table. This is really nice because this means we don't have to worry about friction as this object drags along that surface. This object over here is, is attached to the surface, so it's going to experience friction. And we say... The first object accelerates on a fluff on a flat rough surface. So it's accelerating on this surface, and it wouldn't make sense for it to go this way because there's nothing pulling it that way. So it's got to. So our system has got to be going this way. So that has to be our plus. And this now over here, this uh, this object, the one that's hanging, that can be plus and minus can be any direction we want. So just I'm gonna make plus. Hmm, which way do we want plus to be? Well, let's draw on our forces first. So, okay, so we know our system's moving this way. Oh, no, you know what? We're constrained because our object, because our system is moving this way. It's going, woo. So that means we are constrained. We always have to put plus the direction the system's going. So plus has got to be down in this case for this object. So this is going to be mass one. This is going to be mass two. And let's draw our helper axis for mass two. So mass one is one dimensional, so we don't need to worry anything about that. That's like easy peasy. It's just like the Atwood machine up here, 1D. However, M2 is two dimensional because we're going to have gravity pulling down and we're going to have friction going this way. So we're going to have forces in two dimensions and we have a surface, which means we have a normal force. Let me also uh, draw this. I do this to let people know this is a surface. Okay. So let's draw our helper axes. So we draw an x-axis parallel to the table. That's x. We have y. Boop, boop. There's y. Okay. We have gravity pulling down on both our objects, right? So over here, we've got gravity pulling down. And we I'm going to make this rather long because this gravity is m1g. They, our system's moving this direction. So let's make it long, right? That way, I don't need to adjust it later. This gravity, I'm going to make much shorter. This is M2G. And that's because this object is being pulled that way. There's no reason for me to have like an outrageously big vector here. If I were given numbers, I'd, I'd reflect the numbers. But here I'm allowed to just generalize. So I'm just going to say this object well, doesn't have that much gravity on it. So, okay, we've got our gravity taken care of. We also have a normal force on this guy. And it's going to be the same length as the gravity. So we have a normal force. And then we have tension. They're attached to the same string, so they share the same tension. Tension is always a pull on the object. Remember to start it at your, at your uh, point here, your center of mass on your object. So we have T for here, and we also have this same length. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here. Uh, so let's just say, sure, why not? We have T over here, and we also have the force of friction. Now, friction... Friction's, uh, it's got to be less than our tension, right? Because our tension is pulling the object that way. And friction is always the opposite to the direction of motion. So it's going to be this way. And it's just going to be this tiny thing. And it's always represented by a lowercase f sub k. And it's sub k because it's kinetic friction. If our object was remaining static, maybe it's in equilibrium or whatever, then we would use f sub s because that would be uh, static friction. So, okay, we've got all our stuff here. 
quite a bit goes on, but it's not that crazy. Just gravity, tension, normal force, friction. So we got all that stuff. We are missing one thing. We're missing our positive force in the y direction. So we're going to make up positive because up is normally positive. Why make our life more difficult? You could define it as down and that would be totally fine. Just make sure your equations reflect that. So, okay, we got all this jazz down. Now we're going to go over to our equations. Now on our equations, we've got a mass one and we have a mass two. On our mass two, we have an X and we have a Y. And all three of these are going to have an F net, right? So we have F net equals F net. Oh, uh, let's do these over here. Boop, boop, boop. This is F net X. And this is F net Y. Okay. So we have F net. So for our first object, our object is an acceleration. And it's our first mass. So it's going to be M1A. This object is on the x-axis, our, ob our second object is being dragged. If we look at our diagram, this is being, this box is being dragged uh, because this object, our object hanging is pretty big or pretty heavy, dense. So we have, the size doesn't mean that it's like very powerful, you know? It can, but uh, we have, okay, so M2, F net X is equal to uh, M2. 2a and then our object is not the box isn't moving up or down so this has to be zero and that's why we made that's why gravity and the gra force of gravity here and the normal force are the same the same size if they were a different size you would actually get marked wrong because they are different they are if they were a different size you'd be marked wrong if you they have to be the same because they have to cancel each other out because our object's not flying around up and down all right, so now we just substitute our F net. So the sum of forces on F on our mass one is tension and gravity. And we look at our positive direction. Positive has been defined as going down. So it's got to be M1G minus T. So, okay, we'll square that away. M1G minus T is equal to M1A. And while we're here, we're going to need, well, okay, let's do it step by step. We're going to need T eventually, though. So we will solve for that soon. On our second object, we'll do the x-axis first. Positive has been defined as going this way. So it's got to be t minus little f sub k. So this is t minus little f sub k, which is our force of kinetic friction. And this is m2a. And then we have our y force. Positive is up, so it's going to be n minus m2g. So we have N minus M two G that's equal to zero. So, okay. Our goal here is to figure out what the acceleration is. We have acceleration in two spots. It's here and it's here. And we are going to work with, well, first it's, um, so we have a couple unknowns. So, okay. When we're looking at this, we, we take a couple notes. We say, look at this, this T we don't know. And we don't know this at all. We don't know this. So, we are going to work with the easiest one and then try and figure out, like, what can we figure out, right? So over here, well, we could figure out T, T and then we could substitute it in here. And then we know what F sub K is. F sub K is the friction of coefficient mu sub K times the normal force. And we know where the normal force is. I'm going a little fast. That's just because we have another case. Our normal force is over here. So... What the plan of attack is, is we're going to get tension from over, we're going to get tension from over here. We're going to plug it in here. Then we're going to get the normal force from over here and solve for F sub K. Then we will use our, the rest of our time will be spent solving for A. And that's our plan. So let's do it. First, we will take our gravity, our M1G, and just subtract it over. Divide by negative one and you wind up with negative a plus m1g and so we say great we know what tension is now let's figure out what the normal force is the normal force is m2g so not too bad see so so far so so easy we plug in well first let's do this f sub k right by definition is equal to mu sub k times the normal force we know what the normal force is it was defined over here 
So we substitute in for tension. Tension is negative M1A plus M1G. Our force of friction is minus mu sub K because it's defined right here. And our normal force is over here. So it's mu sub K times M2G. And then we do, do, we've done it. And then we just have that equal to M2A. And now we just need to solve for A. So first thing is I'm going to move this term over here and I'm going to factor this G out at the same time. So I'm doing two things at once. A little warning for you. So I'm taking the G out and I get M1 minus mu sub K M2, right? That's equal to, this is going to be M2A plus M1A. I'm going to factor the A out and get M2 plus M1. And then we simply divide. So we have G times M1 minus mu sub K M2 over M2 plus M1 equal to A. And we have done it. So there we go. Second case. Knocked out of there. Taken out of the park. Oh, whatever. I got a circle. Cool beans. Check that out. It's beautiful. And we look at this and we say, wow, friction doesn't make this... um." Friction doesn't make this too bad. Now we've got a coefficient of friction uh, running around in there. But you notice there's not a lot of difference between our case one and our case two. Um, pretty similar. And then let's move on to our third case. So this one has no words. It's it's picture describing this as a paragraph. It's just overkill, right? Just show me a picture of what's going on and tell me the direction the system's moving. So the system is going up over and down. So we have plus like that. So let me make this a little more condensed. So our system is going like this. Woo! So this object, this object right here, this mass has got to have some gnarly gravity on it because it's yanking with it this object and this object. Whoops, that's not an arrow. That object. So let's begin to do our forces. So what do we know first? What's given? Well, we're given M1, let's make this M1, M2, we'll make this M2, and M3. And so this is uh, where things start to get a little interesting because, you you know, we've got all these things. And positive is up over here, but over, over here it's up, over here it's down. So it's like, whoa, buddy. But don't worry, it builds on what we already know. We know gravity and we also know the friction of coefficient. So first let's add in um, gravity to all our objects, right? And before we even do that... Let's, uh, let's toss in our, our helper axes. So we have here an X axis. I'm drawing it across. This is X. And we have a Y axis going up. So there's our Y axis. Uh, this just defines vertically up and down for us. So in this problem, it's not terribly important, but it, it's a good habit to be in. Okay. So we have down... And sometimes these can be slanted axes, so uh, it's not always vertically down, but it, it, def it defines what we're going to be using relative to these, the graph we put on our system. So it makes, it makes our equations make sense. It's a reference point. So, okay, we have gravity here, and um, let's think about this real quick. Well, this, this object's being pulled up and around, right? So let's draw this one pretty small, M1G, because... It's got to be yanked all the way across. So I don't want to deal... If I draw a big gravity vector here, I'll probably have to adjust other vectors, which would really suck. Same thing for this guy or girl. This one's probably pretty small. M2G. And then this one... Whoa, buddy. Let's make it so... It's pretty obvious we are going down in this direction. So hopefully you get the gist. Our system is moving that way. We also have... Now, on this case, we have two strings, right? We have... This string, whoop, so there's string one. And when we have this string, whoop, that's string two. So that means we're going to have two tensions. We're going to have a tension pulling up on this string. So here's T1. And it's going to be pulling, because remember, tension is always a pull on the object. That's a bit big. Let's make it a little smaller. Because it's got to match our other tension. So this is tension one as well. Now this tension... Is it has to be bigger 
tension two must be bigger than tension one because this object is going that way. So now you might say, what about our gravity vector over here? That's pretty darn big. Well, yeah, but this is affecting this object and that would cause the tension over here to increase. So this tension must be bigger. It would be, you would get marked down if this tension was smaller than this tension. However, our, because of this, our gravity vector still has to be like much bigger because it's, it's what causes the increase in tension. So there's some, that's the physics part of things. We got to keep our, our physics under wraps, right? So there we go. These ideally T1 and T2 should be the same length. Um, this one looks a little, a tad small. So let me make this just a little bit longer, T2. Whatever, you get the idea. All right, so these objects, M1 and M3, are actually taken care of, but we still have a couple problems. So we notice here they are not touching the surface here. So there's no friction, thank goodness. But this one is touching the surface. So it's going to have friction opposite to the direction of motion. So it's going to be going this way. And that's going to be little f sub k because it is friction and it's k sub k because it is kinetic friction lowercase f capital case f is uh lowercase is always friction so you just make sure it's always lowercase now our tension two must be greater than our tension one and our friction combined visually so that's why i drew our second tension rather large so now there's no doubt this vector here is much bigger than these two combined so okay now we just need our normal force. This object, our object here is sitting on a surface and it is not going up or down. So it must be balanced with our gravitational force. So we have a, a normal force up of N. And that is it. We've got our positive and negative direction defined. We are ready to step into equations. So yeah, this is uh, takes a little bit, but you got it. We got it all. So we have M1, bam. M2, bam, and M3, bam. All of them are going to have an F net, F net. And, uh, whoops, M2, before we do that, M2 is two-dimensional, right? We have an X and a Y, while the other two are one-dimensional. So this is going to be X, this is going to be Y. We have F net X, F net Y, and then M3 has F net as well. Okay. Object one and object three are moving. So those are going to be M1A. And this is going to be M3A by the second law of motion. And then these two, on now our, our second object, M2, this one, is also moving, but only in the x uh, the x-axis. So this is going to be M2A. While it's not moving on Y. So our net forces should cancel out, giving us zero. So we are ready to move on to substituting in our F nets. So let's start with the easy one. So M1, we have gravity and we have tension. Plus is this way, so tension's positive. So this one's gonna be tension minus M1G is equal to M1A. Object three, we have the same deal, except for now gravity has been defined as going down. So M3G is gonna be positive and tension is going to be negative. So we get M3G minus T2 equal to M3A. And this should be pretty simple because uh, this is the same as the Atwood machine. And we consider, just remember, we consider our plus and minus individual for every mass. And then M2, this is where things get a little fun. On our x-axis, we have tension, we have friction and friction, and we have another tension. So this is, uh, this is quite interesting. Positive is this way. So it's going to be tension 2, right? Because that's going in the positive direction. Minus tension 1 minus our force of friction. That's going to equal M2A. And then for our y-axis, that's balanced out. We have our normal force and our force of weight going downwards. So it's going to be N because uh, it's been defined as up is positive, so our n's positive, minus m to g equal to zero. And that's it. We've got our systems set up here now. Now we have to manipulate them. So 
We want acceleration. We notice it's all over the place. So we're going to try and get it all into one equation. And over here, we notice we need T1 and T2 and the friction and coefficient. Well, friction and coefficients, just, uh, just a note, note, as in before, our little f sub k is equal to mu sub k times our normal force. And so we see our normal force is over here. So we found our normal force. Cool. Whoops, didn't mean to erase that. Our normal force is over there, so we're going to need that. And then our tension 1 and tension 2 are over here. And I should probably add in that little sub 1 there. So let's go ahead and solve for these. So tension 1 is equal to M1G plus M1A. I'm adding its commutative so I can put them in any order I want. T2, I'm going to move this term over there and divide by the negative 1 at the same time. Hold on to your seats. That's going to be equal to negative M3A plus m 3 G. And then let's solve for our normal force. Our normal force is equal to m2g, because we just move it over. So okay, we've got everything we need. Remember that friction is just mu sub k. So all I'm going to do is n is this. So when I substitute in for friction, I'm going to use this definition and just replace n with this. Okay, so we're about to do a bunch of substitution. We're going to have T2, which is defined as negative M3A plus M3G minus T1. T1 is, uh, I'll put this in parentheses. I would distribute normally in this step as well, but what the heck. Plus M1A, because that's what T1 is. We defined it up here, and the negative stays outside. And then we have... Uh, minus F sub K. So our mu sub, that's going to be mu sub K times M2G, right? Because we said this is this, which is this. So hopefully followed all that. If you didn't get it, felt like I was pretty clear. So just go back and rewatch it. Maybe just went a little fast. And that's equal to M2A. Holy crap, M2A. You're equal to a whole bunch of junk. Let's distribute this negative here. So I'm going to erase these. And when we distribute the negative, we get minus minus, right? Because they were both plus before, but now they're both minus. Just so I don't have to rewrite all this mess again. All right, so what I'm going to do now is anything that's got an A in it, I'm going to move over here and I'm going to factor the A out. So, and, any, and I'm going to factor the G out on those terms that are left over here. So I take a G out. So we have G. And this is... We have M3, this term stays, and that term stays. So it's minus M, whoops, not that term. Where's the other G? This term. Minus M1. Minus mu sub K, this term, M2. And we took the G out of all these terms, so it's on the outside. We're moving over this term. All terms with A are going to have it, so I could take the A out. It's going to be M2, that term. And it's going to be plus M3 because we moved it over to the other side and factored the A out. And then minus M1A, which is going to be plus M1. And so now I can tell you're so excited. We're so close to the answer. Our answer is G times M3 minus M1 minus mu sub K M2 all over M2. We just divide, right, by this term to both sides. So we get M2 plus M3 plus M1. That is equal to A. And behold, we have found the answer. And notice that it looks pretty similar to our previous equations. Our friction and coefficient is again attached to the object that has the friction applied to it, which that should make sense looking at our objects. But you can see how we derived it, so it's got to be there. And you see how... It sort of just looks like a similar equation, just getting slightly more complicated. And our last one has three objects. Notice that the positive object in here is the one that is pulling the system too. So over here, M M3 is positive, and it's the one that's pulling our system. Over here, M1 is positive, and that's the one pulling our system. And then up here, 
Um, M1 is positive, again, the one pulling our system. So we notice just a little takeaway there. Um, something I noticed as I was solving these for my first time. Okay, we have our last problem, our last one, right? Craziest one, we've got a pulley with an object not touching, as you can see here, is not touching uh, our side. So this doesn't have any friction, but this one is touching, so it gets friction. whoop de doo And we have here a force pulling it or up. So our, our this object is going that way. And we know M1, so let's just label these. This is M1, this is M2. Our, we know our friction of coefficient, whatever it could be, but we know it's given to us, so... This was a problem, they would give us a number for that. We know G and we also know theta. So woohoo, we know our angle of inclination. So now we get to go ahead and solve this. So our first deal is we have an object being pulled. They're both being pulled down, right? And I'm gonna make this large because this is the direction of our system, M1G. And this is vertically down, so vertically down. And I don't want this to be that big because um, this object's being dragged. So generally, just make that small. Make your life easy. Now on this one, because it's on a ramp, we have to draw our X and Y, and they, they're actually more important on this problem. So we draw our helper X-axis, and it's we're going to make it parallel to our ramp. So this is X, and perpendicular to it, by definition, is Y. So whatever, you know, they don't need to be perfect. All right. This vector here, uh, so some people, the way I'm taught, and the way I'm taught, the way I was taught in class is you always draw your vectors, all your forces first, then you resolve them. I think that's bogus because then how, then you have to redraw a bunch of vectors at the end. So I think it's actually better. Let's resolve this. Um, this vector is not on our X or Y axes. So we need to resolve it using trigonometry. And so we're going to go ahead and do that first. That way we know how big to draw the other vectors. And I always have sort of a hard time with this, but because uh, my teacher, it's got to look the way it is. It's got to be that way. Otherwise, it's wrong. So um, we need to resolve it. And what we do is we draw altitudes to the X and Y axis. So they're at 90 degrees. See, that doesn't look like 90 degrees. They're at 90 degrees. Um, you know what? Good enough for government work. There's 90 degrees. And this one is also at 90 degrees. And it forms two triangles. And so now let me draw this just a bit bigger. So right, we have an x-axis and a y-axis. And we have some force going this direction. We draw, um, we draw, and we get two triangles. Okay, that's what's going on there. It's just a little crammed. We have our, our force here and our, and our altitude here with our two triangles being formed. In our two triangles, I can solve this whole thing by just making M2G a bit bigger. So let's just go ahead, let's just do that. Okay, let me just go back a bunch of times. Bum, 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 bum. I can erase, I can erase this. Okay, so we're just gonna make M2G just a smidgen bigger so we can see what we're doing. So here's M2G. We drop an altitude at a right angle. That's going to come in at like not a right angle. That's for sure. There we go. That looks better. Yeah. I just have a hard time doing this. I was actually a little nervous about this in the tutorial just because like that's literally, I don't know why I can't do it, but I had a, but we got it done. Look at this. Overcoming nervousness. So these will be our two component vectors, right? We're doing vector resolution. And if this is theta, that means by similar triangles, this is theta and this is theta. Now, I'm not, that's like, that's just some geometry, similar triangles. Uh, you can go, you can go ahead and look that up because that's just going to be a whole nother explanation. But anyways, these are theta by similar triangles. So you use similar triangles and you say, oh, look at this. These are also theta. And so we say, okay, now if this is theta, that makes this M2G, right? And this is the X part. X, but we're using trig, so this is sine theta. And this one is adjacent. This side, uh, this side here is adjacent. So this is m two g cosine theta. Now let me write that somewhere that's not going to suck later. M two g cosine 
theta. That's what this side is. That's what that side is. We have our thetas and we have our sides um, decomposed. Just it's just uh, trig. All right. So that's like that's literally the hardest part. Now we know that this object is not accelerating vertically. So that means that this vector has to be as long as our m2g cosine vector. That's why I say we should just resolve our vectors first. So now we know exactly how long to draw that. We also know we have tension, right? Because these things share the same string. So that means that this is going to have tension, and it must be greater than our, our sine vector because the object's being pulled up that way. So it wouldn't make any sense if our tension was less than how the heck is our object going up. So we're going to have a tension. I'm going to make it you know, large. But now we know at least how big to make it because we have our vector resolved. So we have tension, and this one has to match. It's good enough for me. Tension. There's only one tension. There's only one string. And we also have friction. And so the tension has to be greater than the friction, which is opposite the direction of motion. So this is F sub K. And then this is M2G sine theta. This is So these combined, this one and this one, have to be less than our tension because our object's going that way. So hopefully, I feel like I'm sort of beating a dead horse. But there you go. We have our positive directions defined here as up and because our system's moving this way, our positive must be in that direction. So, okay, we've got that. It's literally the most complicated part. Let's go ahead and jump on over here. So now we've got our two masses, mass one and mass two. Mass two, actually, let's move mass two. Let's move it down over here. Mass two has an X component and a Y component. This one is just one dimensional, so it's just F net equals. And it is an acceleration, right? Because it's moving down or up. So this is M1A, because we're talking about this object. So that one's the one pulling our system, and this one's getting dragged along. So they're both in acceleration. This one, however, is only moving on the X axis. Our object isn't like bouncing up and down or, or flying off in the Y direction. So the F net X, that's got to be equal to M2A because it's accelerating, it's unbalanced. But this is F net Y, and this is equal to zero. And my phone just died. Well, that's a bummer. I just noticed that. So, okay, M2A, F net, that Y, that's equal to zero. So we look at this and we say, all right, let's uh, substitute in our F nets. So on this first one, we say, well, it's M1G. Ooh, and it looks like it's just barely bigger than our tension. I might make that more obvious on a test, but... Uh, M1G is in the positive direction, right? So it's going to be positive M1G minus our tension. That's going to equal M1A. So these are, we're home free at this point. The only difference now is we have trig functions in our in our math, but it's actually, it's not that bad, I promise you. It's, it's much easier than you think. So we have, uh, now we have F net X. And so we notice here we have the force of friction, this force and that force. Tension and the X component of our weight vector. So we say, okay, tension is, is going in the positive direction. Remember, we always have to write things in the positive direction. And that's going to be minus F sub K minus M2G sine theta. And remember, it's minus minus. Whoops. Oh, I don't think you see, you don't see my push notification, so that's good. That's equal to M2A. And... It's minus minus, right? Because both of these forces are acting against our tension. So it's going to be minus them both. And then for F net Y, that's just going to be our normal force. And we have the force M2G cosine theta. So we have our normal force, which is going in the positive direction. So that's going to be positive. Minus M2G cosine theta equal to zero. And that is, I believe that's it. We got it all. So let's go ahead and solve for the acceleration, right? Because that's that's what we want to know. So we look at this and we say, okay, well, it's going to be the same setup as the other ones. So we need tension. And remember, F sub K is this thing up here. Mu sub K times N. That's just a definition. So we know N is right here, so let's go ahead and get that, get that squared away. So we have M2G cosine theta. Boom, got N. Now we need tension for right over here, right? So tension is equal to negative M1A plus M1G. 
And I just, I move this term over to the other side and divide it by negative one to make it a positive T. So I'll, I'm, it should be, I'm hoping you got that. So, okay. We've got T, we've got N. So we can now just substitute this in. So T is negative M1A plus M1G. Friction and coefficient is mu sub K times our normal force, which we already solved for M2G cosine theta. And then we have minus M2G sine theta equals M2A. And we are so close. So anything that's got an A, we're going to move over. So this has an A, we're going to move that over. And uh, that's it. That's all that has an A. I'm going to factor the G out. So we have a G out here. And it's going to be M1, this term, minus MK M2 cosine theta, this term. And we took the G out, right? So we just removed that. Minus M2 sine theta. And we took the G out. That's going to equal A times M2 plus M1. I just moved it over and removed and factored out the A. And then we have our answer. We just simply have this. Um, ba -ba -ba, M1 minus mu sub K M2 cosine theta. See, they're just, they just end up, you don't have to do any trig stuff really. It's easy peasy. Sine theta over M2 plus M1 equal to A. And there you have it. And we look at this form and then we say, look at this. This looks very similar. Only now, since we're on inclination, the object on our inclination now has some trig functions, cosine and sine, which makes sense because we're on a ramp. But the one that's one dimensional obviously is not affected by this. And we could sort of compare our equations. Say, look, in all of these, we could take a G out and so on and so forth. And we always have our mass added together at the bottom. So we say that's kind of an interesting thing we're noticing. And yeah. So hopefully this, this has made some sense to you. This uh, We have gone through each of these. They Obviously, they can get much more complicated, but you've now seen a, a really good way of sort of looking at the problems and solving them, the methodology behind some of it. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Or maybe I made a small mistake somewhere or misspelled something. I get caught on spelling errors all the time. Subscribe and have a blessed day.